Welcome to Culinary Dislice with your hosts, Carlos and Kevin. This is our first episode, and we thought what better place than while we're camping in beautiful provincial park in Ontario. It's a cold, dreary, rainy day, and so we thought what better thing to cook than Walt's own chili recipe. We're going to start by putting on medium heat, and we'll use about a quarter cup of oil. Now this recipe is dead simple to make, anybody can do it. We're going to start by cooking off some, about two cups of celery, and two medium onions. What we want to do is try to get them just translucent. Grab myself a stirring spoon here. We'll take just a few minutes, get up to heat. Now while we're waiting for that get, to get to the right consistency, I'll tell you some of the other ingredients we're going to be putting in here. So we've, like I said, two cups of uh, celery so far, two medium onions just chopped, and over here you can see we've also have uh, two cloves of garlic just chopped up, a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of thyme, and a tablespoon of paprika. Now there's also Another version, if you want to make it a little spicier, and we'll show it up on the screen here, but it, it consists of a, an eighth of a teaspoon of coriander, an eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric, an eighth of a teaspoon of chili seeds, an eighth of a teaspoon of fennel, an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth of a teaspoon of dried ginger, ginger and one small Mexican chili pepper. But for our purposes here today, we're just going to make the basic chili recipe. Now what we've had soaking overnight is uh, two cans of, uh, or actually two cups of uh, dried pinto beans. And you can also use uh, canned beans if they're more readily available to you. So the first thing that we're going to be uh, adding in here is going to be the garlic and we're just going to cook off the garlic and we're also going to add the spices in at this point so we'll add the, the chili powder the paprika and the thyme and of course you can always adjust to taste as you wish and we'll be adding some salt and pepper in a little bit just to adjust to, uh, to individual tastes so you want to get it to the point where the onions and the celery are soft, cooked through, and are just at the translucent phase. You don't really want them to brown or burn. At which point we'll be adding about two pounds of ground beef. I'll grab my salt and pepper. And add a little bit of pepper and salt to taste. And of course we'll try this again a little later just to make sure it's where we want it. So that looks about right. Now I'm just going to set this aside for a minute as I grab another pot. I just want to brown off the 
ground beef just so we can make sure we get some of the excess fat out of it. It looks like we're just about ready with the ground beef. It's nice and brown. What we'll do now is just quickly drain it. We can return our original pot. As you recall, it contains the onions and celery and garlic and our spices, the chili powder, the paprika, and the uh, dried thyme. We'll add our ground beef to this. And make sure everything is thoroughly incorporated. So next we're going to add about 28 ounces of tomatoes and I happen to be using uh, strained tomatoes just because we don't want the we don't like the seeds in the tomatoes. So About two bottles is, I believe, about 48 ounces, and because we're doubling the recipe. Again, the whole recipe will be on the website, uh, www.culinarydislights.com. There you'll, will give you all the uh, instructions on how to prepare this meal, as well as the quantities and how to increase it if you want to make a double batch like we are making here. We're making a big batch, we have a lot of people to feed today. So now once that's incorporated and heated through, we're going to add our uh, pinto beans to it. And again, if you have dried pinto beans in your area, just uh, about um, two pounds of pinto beans, have them um, straight um, soaking overnight and if you don't hand pinto beans are just fine just make sure you rinse them to get rid of all the fluid that was in with the uh, the beans themselves and we're just about coming up to the end of this recipe again remember culinary dis lights for the uh, all the instructions on how to make it as well as a printed recipe Garnish with your favorite nacho chips. And it's actually even much better the second day. So I'll just plate this up for you so you can see what it looks like. And there you have it. Walt's Own Chili. Brought to you by Carlos and Kevin from Culinary Diz Lights. Be sure to visit us www.culinarydizlights.com for more recipes and also email us. You can email us at info at northernmouse.com just to give us any ideas and suggestions for new recipes that you'd like to see. Remember bringing the, the Disney magic home to Culinary Diz Lights. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>